GoPros and action cameras in general kind of get a bad rap. There's kind of this stigma out there that you can't get amazing shots and great quality out of one. Well, I think that's wrong, and I think you can. So here's what I do to get great quality footage with a GoPro. So I'm using the GoPro Hero 6. This is the latest in their line, even though it's been out for quite a while. There are a bunch of different options on the market, but I think this is still the best one to buy for a bunch of different reasons, but the best thing about it is the image quality and the frame rates. The first thing I do to ensure great quality is switch over to ProTune, which will let you change the settings of the camera manually and give you the most control. I usually keep the frame rate on auto, Unless you are really planning out each shot, those kind of become cumbersome to worry about every single time. And you know, after all, this is an action cam, so I don't really wanna think about the camera. I kinda just use it in a scenario and I want it to work. I've used these auto modes many times and they work well. I do set exposure compensation to negative 0.5. I find this helps with the highlights so they don't get blown out quite as much. There's nothing worse than blown out highlights. And finally, the most important setting here is to turn on flat color. This is by far the most important thing. It will give you the most data in the image so that later when we bring it into the computer, you can edit it and get the best result. Now, the next important part kind of depends on what you are trying to shoot. But I'll go over my particular style, which is mostly quote unquote epic shots, almost always outdoors, trying to emphasize movement. So for that, I pretty much always use high frame rates. With the Hero 6, you can shoot 4K 60, which is great high res and you can slow it down a little. But the option that I use most often is 2.7K at 120 frames per second. Yes, the quality isn't quite as good, but honestly, it's hard to tell the difference, especially on YouTube, and it's way slower than 60 FPS, which gives you many more options in post. So those are my settings, and I just use the bare camera, nothing added to it. You can get fancy with ND filters and housings, all that kind of stuff. I have nothing against any of that, I've tried them all before. I just haven't found a huge difference when using them over just the built-in settings. But let's take some of the unprocessed footage that I've shot into the computer, and I'll show you how to make it, you know, pop a little bit more. Real quick, before we head to the computer, it's time to pay some bills, and this video is brought to you by Dollar Shave Club. I've been a subscriber of Dollar Shave Club for a few years now, actually, and we all have our daily grooming routines. I like a shower, brush my teeth, do something to my hair so I don't have to wear a hat every day like I did today, but I bet you didn't know that Dollar Shave Club not only has shaving products, but also all grooming products that you pretty much need. Toothpaste, body wash, hair products, everything you need to take care of your daily grooming needs and just make you feel your best. Seriously though, I didn't realize they sold pretty much everything you'd want. So check these out. One of my favorites is the One Wipe Charlies. These are just an easy way to stay fresh and feel clean. Dollar Shave Club is basically giving away their daily essential starter set to new members for only $5. This starter set comes with three trial sized versions of their most popular products that help you stay fresh and clean along with their executive razor. In your first box, you'll receive their shave butter, body wash, and one wipe Charlie's butt wipes. You'll also receive their executive razor, which includes their premium weighty handle and a full set of cartridges, so you have plenty to start you off. After the first box though, replacement cartridges are sent for only a few bucks a month. This is a $5 offer and it's available at dollarshaveclub.com slash Matt Gonzalez. That's dollarshaveclub.com slash Matt Gonzalez. Seriously, it's only five bucks, it's worth a try, and I use it myself. Okay, thanks for sticking with me. Let's go ahead into the computer and go over my process, what I think about when looking through my footage and how I edit it. Now, I have some clips here. Some are from Hawaii, which I did make a video on. That'll be linked down below. Short video, check it out, but most of that video was shot on a GoPro. So, you know, just an idea of how I actually use the footage. And the other was here at the beach at Laguna Beach. So we're going ocean themed today. And what I like about these clips is that they have vibrant colors and that's right out of the camera so we're gonna make them pop even more now I shoot most of my clips in slow motion like I said and I do that because the style I'm going for is a little bit more dramatic if that makes sense I'm not trying to use it as an a cam like I have here it's more for filler and interesting shots that I wouldn't be able to get with a main camera and having that slow motion clip just 
gives you way more options in editing. Now, one interesting thing when you do that is I can record for two to three minutes at a time and only use like five seconds of that clip. And that's kind of what goes for these clips that I have here. For instance, this first one is me just kind of walking on the sand, but really I'm only gonna choose this little clip here. Honestly, that's probably a little bit too much. And it's super short, I mean, play it back and I mean, it's kind of a boring clip. It looks like I shot it on my phone. But if we slow it down, let's go ahead and just choose automatic speed. That's the easiest way to do it in Final Cut Pro. Now it's slow motion and you know, it's still not the most interesting clip, but there's a lot more uses that I can find for this clip now that it's slow. I can do a speed ramp. I can keep it slow like it is. I can play it back at full speed like I did before. There's just way more things to do with it. Now I'll go through a few of the other ones. This one is here on the boat. I'll select that. Let's see here on the wave, diving underneath. And we'll go this last one here of me just swimming to the boat. So those are the shots I'm gonna use. Really not that many and it's less than 15 seconds on my timeline. So that's probably coming from what is maybe 20 minutes of total footage, 15 seconds out of that. So not a lot being used. But I find being super selective like that is the best way to find those little gems. If you just watch back the entire clip, it just looks like you're holding a GoPro and walking around. But if you find those little gems that are in there, you just get a much better result. Okay, let's talk about color because that is very important. I'll start with this clip here. And what I usually do for pretty much any clip is start with a LUT. There's a lot of different LUTs out there. I've bought a ton of them. I've created my own, and that's kind of the route I've been going lately. I don't have any of them available for you yet, but if that's something you'd like to see, I can put them together and have you guys download them if, if it's something you want. So let me know down below in the comments. But I start with the LUT. So happy that Final Cut Pro 10 has a LUT support now, so I can just you know do it without having any third parties. So add a LUT there. And for these, I usually do a teal and orange, especially for these clips that are at the ocean. You get the blue ocean, you get the orange sand. I think it just works really well. When you first add it, you're like, geez, that looks horrible. It is way too overpowering. These are not being shot in log or anything like that. It's just a GoPro flat color profile. So you're definitely gonna wanna adjust this. I like to start at half and just see where it goes from there. If you bring it down to half, I mean, that already is looking way, way better. If you turn it off and on, that's where you can really see how it adjusts the tones. And I really like the way this is looking already. From there is where I kind of get into the more minute tweaks that really vary from clip to clip. It changes every single time. But the way I do that is going into curves. I've really gotten used to using curves lately. There's a lot of different options that you can do to adjust the exposure and the colors, but curves is the one that I like. So I'll start by kind of bringing down the shadows a little bit and then bringing up the highlights. And this will just give you your basic contrast. So you can adjust that and you'll have more contrast. And then here in the mid tones, you can bring that up or down depending on what. So like if you go too high, then it starts to look, just, just look straight weird. If you bring it too low, then again, same thing. It just doesn't look quite right. It looks like we're in the mud now. So, you know, just little tiny adjustments to get the clip just right. And then I'll go into color wheels and I'll adjust the saturation. So highlights, bring those up a little bit, shadows. Personally, I like a saturated image. That's just the style that I like, but that really just depends on you. So here we go. I think this is looking pretty decent. Now when I go back and toggle the effect on and off, you can really see the difference that these little tiny tweaks make. And you know, that's just what takes the GoPro footage from looking like it was shot on a GoPro to looking like it was shot on my main camera. When I'm going through, it's really just about feel. It takes practice and really there's no right or wrong way to do this. It's just about what you want it to look like. And if you like the way it looks, great. So this is what I've done for the few clips and add a little bit of music, add some effects, and bam, you've got yourself a video. But yeah, that is how I go about getting awesome footage from my GoPro. It's a really powerful tool that I think if used correctly, gives you some amazing results. It's just something you can't get with a traditional camera. The fact that you can just take it in the water, take it on your bike, take it in the mountains, do what really whatever you want with it. It's a very powerful tool and it gives you some excellent results if, if done correctly. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any other questions, feel free to leave them down below in the comments. I'll be sure to answer as many as I can. And if you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit that subscribe button so you can see new videos like this, which come out every single week, hopefully. I wanna thank y'all so much for watching. Again, my name is Matt, and I'll see you in my next video. See ya.